Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things tech and finance. And in this video, I'm going to be going over absolute paths in Python. So why should we even use absolute paths? When using absolute paths, all the file locations are in relation to your root level directory. Tracking down dependent files in an absolute path framework can be quite easy to do and quite logical, since we know that everything is in relation to the absolute directory, or in this case, the root directory, you can just track down your files with your subdirectory pathway in order to locate which type of file that you may want to import. And there's a few flaws that are associated with using an absolute path, and that can lead to a very, very long line of text to identify what type of module that you want to import into another module, for instance. However, the PEP8, which is the official style guide in Python, recommends that you use absolute paths over relative paths. And there are a few reasons why. So as I mentioned earlier, we know that absolute path is the pathway in relation to your root directory. And this is really, really useful when there are multiple collaborators working on your same given project. Because if we were to use relative paths, if we switch some form of module to a different folder altogether, it may ruin the entire setup. However, if we stick with the absolute path, we know that everything's in relation to the root level and we can just build off of that and nothing will really change once we start incorporating additional features to our overall code base. And furthermore, when we are using relative paths, we're going to be using a lot of dots and just tracking where these file locations, you know, parent directories, parents of the parent directories can be quite confusing when you're trying to track down specific files in a very, very large code base. And that can be a little bit decrypting sometimes. Okay, so let us begin on the demonstration on absolute paths. So first things first, we want to have the main uh, executable so that we just put all of our uh, all of our good content inside of the main function over here. And we know that we are going to be using a YAML function just to set things up and make sure that everything is parameterized here. So let's create a new folder called this configs. And within the configs folder, we want a file called this like file addresses.yaml. And the only, only thing that's going to go into here is going to be the parameterized values that we will be putting into our other functions in order for them to utilize. So within this file address, we want to have an additional, uh, I guess like a data folder. Oops, we don't want a data in here, but we want it outside. So let's create a new folder called this data. And then within data, we want to have a file that's called this like file.txt. And then within file txt, it's like uh, this is where the file text file exists. Something along those lines. And then so we, can, we don't need that content anymore. But within here, just be the file location. And in, in terms of the absolute location, it'll be everything is in relation to absolute paths. So it'll just be data um, slash, and then we have file.txt. So we can just pass in this file address inside of a parameterized format and everything is in relation to absolute paths.py. So let us read in the file. Let's open this file up. It will be uh, my dictionary is equal to safe load, yaml dot safe load. And we want to read in F. So this is going to read this content as a dictionary. So within our main, we are going to be Essentially, just reading in the data, the file txt using the parameters from file address over here. So, same concepts, um, but in this case, we will be opening up the, uh, the my dictionary, and we are going to be passing in the file address to get this value over here. So it's essentially a uh, the file address to our file.txt. So we're reading that in over here, and then this printout line to see if everything works out. So let me pull my anaconda prompt over here, and let's run this. So Python, Python absolute path. Okay, so it looks like that ran correctly. This is where the file text exists. Okay, so let's get into a little bit more nitty gritty details. So let's create an additional folder. Let's call this customers, and we're gonna have another folder. Uh, let's call that um, uh, supermarkets and supermarkets. Let's actually put in these two folders inside of a different folder, just called like packages. 
um, supermarkets, oops, supermarkets goes there, customers go here, so we have packages. Within customers, let's have a file in this case, it's called as alex.py, just could be a person uh, that's gonna be calling on all the other modules within supermarkets. So let's have, no supermarkets, um, let's have Costco, and let's have CVS, and maybe one more, let's do like Walmart. Walmart. Okay, cool. So let's split this out. We have CVS and we have Costco. Okay, and then we have Alex. We also want to incorporate the init.py. So it just be init.py. This is all this is doing is making sure that the directory that we are in, uh, all the files within that directory is uh, modularized. So it can be, uh, so each of these files can be imported. Uh, to a different directory and use that as a customized library in in itself. So let's do that as well. over here as well. We have init.py uh, for Alex since this is going to be imported to the main value over here. Okay, so let's minimize that so you guys can see that. Okay, cool. So let's cancel out of that and let's create some very simple function for Costco. So let's say like Okay, so we have our three simple functions over here, and now let's create the Alex. So let's say that he he's interested in these three separate uh, shopping areas, and he wants to call all the all three of these functions over here. So what we want to do is that we want to import these specific, I guess, uh, Python modules and make them make make it so that the functions are executable. Okay, so let us put some doc strings over here. So say like Alex, I don't know, customer Alex, customer Alex inquiry. Okay, and then when we have that, we want to import. So from packages, packages dot supermarkets, supermarkets import. We want Costco, CVS, and Walmart. And that's all you really do because we are essentially we are using the absolute pathways and that's packages supermarkets and everything's in relation to the absolute path since we will be calling everything in this main function so let's uh, import this as well so it'll be from packages dot customers import alex and we could be getting this alex over here so we want let's just create like an inquiry store function inquiry store and this is going to go and just call costco dots costco info and cvs uh, it's all cap cvs um, dots cvs info and we can do the same thing for walmart walmart is it a capital yeah capital okay and then walmart info Okay, so that's just going to call that. And then now we have Alex. Alex will be called over here. So let's have print Alex. Alex line or something like that. And then it will just be Alex.inquiry. Inquiry store. And let's run that. Let's see. Let's see what happens. So let's pull the trusty anaconda. It'll just be Python absolutes. And voila, we have successfully called a package uh, well three packages based on this one package over here so let's um, incorporate some additional granularity to this so let's say we want to spruce up our data contact so let's have like a new file and we want this file to be like called like receipts.csv within this receipts there is going to be let's say let's say like eggs uh, bacon, cheddar, milk, salt, and pepper. And let's incorporate how much, I, I guess, um, how much he spent on each of these values. So $2 for eggs, for a carton of eggs, $6 for bacon, 6 for cheddar, and then milk is close to 4 Salt, say three, and pepper is three. So this is gonna be our CSV file. We want to load in this CSV file within the main function. Uh, so we can now change up the file address as well. So let's say that this is gonna be the, the receipt address. So receipt address over here, and I'll call this data, and then receipts.csv. So we can now pretty much just use the same exact address that we have going on over here, and we can call in Alex. 
So let's cancel. We all need this, that, or this, that. So let's create another function over here. So Alex, in this case, he's going to be getting his receipts. So get receipts over here, and we are going to be accepting some form of string. Um, and that's just going to be the file location. So let's use pandas as well. So um, it'll just be, let's say pass and then import pandas as pd. And then this is going to be the receipt address. And this could be a type string. String. And let's minimize this a little bit. Um, okay. So it's just a file pd.read. This could be a CSV file. We're just going to be passing in the receipt address. Delimiter is going to be a comma. And then let's say, yeah, this, we just want to print out the file. And we know that the index itself, just to make it a little bit more clean, we just have an index uh, stating that it's going to be um, like, I don't know, money. And you spent that in US dollars. Okay, and then we know that we have our given function to use. So Alex will be calling that function over here, but the only thing that will be different is that we have a my dictionary term as well. And it's gonna be calling this receipt address because we know uh, it's, a, it's a YAML file and it will be reading the specific dictionary key to get that specific value. So we'll be passing in the receipt address over here and the money will be associated with index and we print out that file and that should work um and so let's pull out the trusty anaconda rerun that oh and we have an error delimiter it's an i delimiter that's an i so let's rerun this Voila. Okay, so we have our given. We have an NA. Uh, okay, sure. But yeah, we successfully read a CSV. Yeah, we have an additional comma at the end. And if we rerun that, we're not going to have the NA. Uh, but yeah, so that is how do you how you use absolute paths. Uh, Everything is in relation to your main uh, root file, and everything is very easy to follow and track to identify where your packages are located and how these packages can interact with each other. So if you like what you saw, make sure you leave a like, hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in my next video.